Asia is increasingly important in the world today, not just in Vancouver, but in the world, the world economy. I try to help the students understand what's going on in the world today by rooting it in the past, especially in how Asia has interacted within Asia, the interaction between one Asian country and another, one Asian people and another. The first semester we go from Stone Age to around 1500, and then in term two, Asia 101, we do from about 1500, which is when Westerners start showing up, establishing a permanent presence in parts of Asia. From 1500 to the present day, we go all the way to the 21st century. I give two, two one-hour lectures a week, and then students break up into smaller tutorial groups, about 20, 25 students each, ideally, with the graduate student assistants, and that's where they get a chance to ask questions about things they didn't understand in the lecture because students are often too shy to raise their hand. And so the tutorials allow them to uh, go over material they weren't quite sure of and to check and see if they understood it correctly. And we have, um, we have about 50 pages of reading a week, which is not excessive. We have a midterm exam and a final exam, a little short little two-page paper halfway through each term in which I ask them to look at a Wikipedia page and identify the mistakes in it. And then we have um, about a five-page term paper due at the end of the term. And so they will come out of this course having a better understanding of how countries become industrial societies, how they become democratic, and what nationalism means, how it arises, and what in fact the, uh, impact it has um, on the people who become nationalists and on their neighbors.